Western Australia has some of the world's highest Indigenous incarceration rates, but a new prison in Derby is being hailed as a game changer. The West Kimberley Regional Prison aims to reduce reoffending by teaching inmates life skills and instilling in them a sense of pride and independence. But not everyone's convinced Indigenous prisons are the answer. Lucy Martin reports. Leon Everett is cooking dinner for his household. On tonight's menu, slow-cooked beef. But this is no ordinary kitchen. Watch the fingers, mate. Leon and his housemates are serving time in the West Kimberley Regional Prison on the outskirts of Derby. WA's newest correctional facility has all the features of the average jail. There's plenty of guards, high fences and security is tight. But that's where the similarities stop. There's no other prison in the country like this. Um, in fact, uh, there are probably no other prisons in the world like this. Here, the 144 male and female inmates are free to roam the grounds during the day. They live in self-contained houses, grouped according to family ties and security rating. Guards shoot the breeze with prisoners and the grounds are anything but traditional. When you go into the prison, one of the first things you're going to notice is there are trees everywhere. And a tree is considered, a, in some cases, a hanging point. Well, here you've got a prison where it's full of trees. Researcher John Rin spends a lot of time in jail. He's been visiting prisons across WA and the Northern Territory as part of efforts to develop a national measure of prison quality for Indigenous inmates. He's been to Derby three times and likes what he sees. There's a level of tension even in, a, even in the best prison. Uh, when you walk inside, sure, there's a level of a prison, a uh, level of tension, you know you're in a prison. But there's also a sense of control, of calmness, uh, which is really unusual. Prison guard John Hayden is a popular figure among inmates. They respect him. Hello, fellas. And he them. So where's your country? Broom. Broom? I'm going up that way next, next Monday. It's all about broom, being good with each other, you know, being able to work with each other in a, in a good environment which these guys enjoy. And if, you, if you've got people that like doing what they're doing, um, they're more likely to, to um, you know, participate. This prison is all about participation. It runs under what's known as a self-care model. Inmates are given a weekly budget to buy food. They cook their own meals and they don't get out of doing the washing either. That suits Leon just fine. It's pretty good to learn how to, learn how to cook, you know eat healthy food, so maybe when you get out, you know, you'll know how to cook or something, you know. The 26-year-old has seen the inside of almost all WA's prisons. Compared to those, Derby seems like a walk in the park. But beyond the Boabs and the basketball court is a stark reminder that this is no holiday camp. Is it a shift to being too easy? No. They're still in prison. They talk about the thoughts get in their head. They still are locked there at night. They're away from their family. You've got to get up in the morning, you know. We wake you up, basically. They get up, prepare their breakfast and that, prepare for work. So it's a, it's a whole routine. And they got, you know, we try to so say, you've got to still understand that you're still in a prison. It is a prison. Those who complain are offered an immediate transfer to one of the mainstream prisons down south. Few take up the offer. There's also a strong focus on giving prisoners the skills they'll need to get a job on the outside, because those who find stable work are less likely to re-offend. Local communities tell us what skill shortages they've got, what they need, and we focus our education and training on that. Now, the, the skill shortages we've noticed at the moment, or been told about at the moment in the communities, is construction, uh, community services, hospitality, and aged care. So we work on those things. On the outskirts of town stands a reminder of less enlightened times. Police once used this boab tree to lock up Aboriginal prisoners on their way to court. Of course, such inhumane treatment is a thing of the past. Far more alarming now is the staggering number of Indigenous people being sent to prisons, like the one just down the road. Indigenous West Australians are 20 times more likely to be jailed than their white counterparts. It's almost become 
uh, manhood type ceremony. So making it, so now making the, the prisons become more culturally appropriate and, you know, is, is going to make it more attractive. Warren Mundine is the head of the Prime Minister's Aboriginal Advisory Council. I'm not saying that we should go back and make them lay on the ground on the, on the cold stones and, and get out the lash and whipping them and that, uh, but uh, it, the problem is we don't want to make you know, the detention centres and jails too appealing to people. At the end of the day, uh, the desire for freedom, the desire to interact with your family uh, is greater than, uh, I guess, what is a regimented lifestyle within uh, the walls of a prison, even for a modern prison uh, that approaches rehabilitation in such, um, such uh, I guess, innovative ways. The Corrective Services Minister, Joe Francis, isn't concerned. They basically look after themselves for breakfast, they make their own lunch. He was impressed with a recent tour of the prison and says the $150 million price tag is worth it. The cost of re-incarcerating the same people over and over again is so expensive to the taxpayer that uh, I think you can say any money that's spent trying to break that cycle is money well spent. Just how to break the cycle of Indigenous crime and despair has confounded governments for decades. Warren Mundine says to successfully do so, the focus and funding should be on delivering programs outside prison walls. What happens if it's culturally appropriate and good in the prison and there's nothing good outside? Well, where are people going to head? They're going to go to prison. And it needs to start early because we know if, we, if you go in a detention centre as a youth, that's, you know, we got them for life. The department runs more than a dozen programs designed to divert Kimberley youth away from crime, but not one of them is controlled by Aboriginal people. Diversionary programs need to be run by the community, for the community, for the betterment of the community, not diversionary programs that are imposed from Perth. The top-down approach isn't working, according to Greens MP Robin Chappell. He says the state government should instead let each community develop and run its own programs in its own time. The first thing they should do is go out there and sit down for a week with the mob and listen. Because unless you do that, you'll come up with a program which people will say, oh, we'll accept that, and it won't work. The Corrective Services Minister is coy when it comes to the lack of community-owned programs, saying he's counting on a newly formed Youth Justice Board to guide him. In the meantime, Western Australia has agreed to trial a program that guides young people in the court system towards jobs and training. Derby Prison hasn't been open long enough to measure recidivism rates, but John Hayden doesn't expect to see change for a few years at least. I think because of the outside influences that a lot of these guys are entangled with, um, we're going to get them back, you know. We're going to get probably 40% or 50% of them back here at different times. Our point them is, well, we hope you don't come back, you know, we, we'd like to see you stay out. Leon has one year left to serve and he's determined to make this day his last. Uh, my plans are to stay out, of, stay out of trouble and not come back to jail. Lucy Martin reporting there.